Government's target to make India a $5 trillion economy by 2025 is based on proper plan, says Union Finance Minister. Lok Sabha passes demands for grants for railways. Railways will not be privatized, assures Pius Goel. Flood situation of Northeast remains grim as vast areas of Assam, Meghalaya and Onachal are reeling under flood water. Army NDRF deployed for rescue work. Today, Northeast Disability Summit begins in Guwahati. Union Secretary Gamlin says Divyangas deserve equal opportunities. And in ICC World Cup, England to take on New Zealand in the final at Lords on Sunday. Good evening, viewers, and welcome to the Northeast News Bulletin. This is Hans Raj, and now the details. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said that government's target to make India a $5 trillion economy by 2024-2025 is based on a proper plan. Replying to the budget discussion in the Rajya Sabha, Sitaraman listed out several measures proposed in a union budget in this direction. She said the big picture presented in this budget is backed with a plan to increase investment without compromising on the fiscal consolidation roadmap. She said the budget shows government's commitment to boost investment in agriculture, social and health sectors. The minister highlighted several measures taken by the Center for the Welfare of the Farmers, saying steps of the NDA government for agriculture is focused and not just on a single scheme, but on the recovery of the sector as a whole. value from stressed assets, recapitalizing public sector banks. You, uh, you've come to know that even in this current budget, we have given a large chunk chunk of money for the recapitalization of banks and reforms. So the four hours strategy of resolution. Lok Sabha has passed the demands for grants under the control of the Ministry of Railways for 2019-20. Replying to a debate on the demands for grants, Railways Minister Pius Goel today assured the House that railways will not be privatized. He hit out at the previous UPA government saying that earlier railway budgets were announced to keeping in view of winning elections. He said the government has accorded high priority to the safety of railway passengers. The minister said the government has allocated over 5,640 crore rupees for passenger safety for this year as against over 2,100 crore rupees in 2009. He said to ensure safety, the ministry has started manufacturing of LHB coaches. उद्देश्य रख के काम किया अगर हम एक्सीडेंट की संख्या देखें माननीय अध्यक्ष जी हमारे समय घट के वो सौ से भी नीचे आ गए नाइन्टी फाइव पॉइंट सिक्स एक्सीडेंट the overall flood situation remains grim in Assam as new areas have been inundated due to bridge of river embankments. Over 8,69,000 people are reeling under the fury of flood in 21 districts. 68 relief camps were opened for the flood affected people. Till now, three human lives were lost in the state. NDRF and SDRF teams have been deployed to rescue flood hit people. Road traffic has been badly affected due to flood causing the massive problems to villages. Temporary relief camps have been set up to shelter flood affected people. The flood water has affected Kaziranga National Park creating dislocation of animals of the park. Koliabor Subdivisional Officer has promulgated a 144 CRPC on the National Highway 37 so that the animals could move to safer places. However, report says animals are not taking shelter on highlands created for them fearing of becoming easy prey to poachers and taking advantage of the situation. Khibohagar and Sirang districts have also been affected by floods badly. In Khibohagar, all the rivers including Dikho, Disang are in spat affecting several villages. In Sirang district, river I has created havoc and several hundred villages have uh, taken shelter in higher places. Meanwhile, two persons were drowned in a boat accident in river Brahmaputra at Tiapara Sar under Pancharatna River Police Station in Gualpara district last night. Out of the two missing persons, the body of one Nur Sheikh was recovered by the local people last night. The SDRF and river police today recovered the other body of Abdul Munaf. The local MLA today visited the affected families and assured financial assistance.
In Meghalaya, West Kasi Hills district was badly hit by flash floods and landslides triggered by heavy rains, which lashed the state for the past six days now. Several buses, uh, houses and shops uh, situated near the Nondane River were also badly affected and vehicular movement was also disrupted, causing traffic snarl, which lasted for several hours. Educational institutions have remained closed due to heavy rainfall and flash floods. Incidents of landslides were reported in several parts of the district, including Thie uh, Chaplang village under International Highway 44 along the Riangdo to Nongstoin Road that left all vehicles stranded. Landslides were also reported at Nongstoin Bypass, uh, Pindingri Internal Road and other different parts of Nongstoin Shillong Road. In regard with the matter, the district administration of Waka has warned citizens to be alert, particularly those staying near the river. In Onachal Pradesh, thousands of people in the Lekang Circle in Mahadevpur subdivision of Namsai district are under threat after a major portion of a 42 crore rupees anti-erosion project at New Sialto village was washed away by the Noa Deng River on Thursday night. There are 42 villages in the Lekang Circle and if the government fails to plug the bridged portion, then the lives and properties of the people might be in danger. In Tripura, incessant rain across the state caused by strengthening of monsoon affected normal life since Friday afternoon. In Agartala, major parts of the city was marooned. All the low-lying areas of Agartala have been submerged with rainwater and traffic movements was hit. Since July 10th, monsoon rain hit Tripura with moderate winds and incessant rain, but since Friday afternoon, the rain across Agartala severely affected the normal life. Low-lying city areas adjacent to River Haura have also been flooded by surging water. Nagaland Governor, who is also the President of Indian Red Cross Society in Nagaland, IRCS and PB Acharya had the meeting with the members at a Red Cross Conference Hall in Kohima on Thursday. Governor Acharya in his speech said that he is enriched by more knowledge about the happenings during such interactions and performed his duty as the President of IRCS and with a clean conscience. The Governor also said that much development has taken place in the state during the last five hours, years. He requested the members of IRCSN that they should also target the orphanages as these orphanages are mostly looked after and taken care of by an individual or by a family. Acharya showed that he would do more for peace and development of the state. In Assam, a two-day first Northeast Disability Summit was held at Guwahati University in Guwahati today. The summit, inaugurated by Secretary for Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities, Union Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Shakuntala Dole Gamlin, aims for foster growth of Divyangas, mainly in Northeastern region. Addressing the function, Gamlin said that the Divyangas have equally contributed for the development of the country and they deserve equal opportunities in all respects. She also spoke about the various facilities extended both by the center and state governments for the Divyangas. The function was also attended by Assam Additional Chief Secretary Jishnu Borwa, Vice Chancellor of Gauhati University, Midul Hazarika, along with a host of other dignitaries. At the function, Divyangas were also presented with various equipments. In order to undertake a particular work, we are not really so able to do everything. Persons who are actually available on the ground. Manipur Agriculture Minister V. Hang Hang Klian said that fertilizers will be given after submission of land patta and adha cards by the farmers so that the fertilizers will reach the targeted beneficiaries. This was stated by the minister to the media while he was on a visit to the community nursery seeding site at Khundraktam in Imphal East, Siren Village, Polangso Lokan in Imphal West and Nachao Village in Bishnupur District on Thursday. The minister said that paddy seeds sown can be transplanted by the end of this month and will be distributed to the farmers where seeds could not be sown owing to shortage of sufficient rains. The agriculture department has taken up initial steps and already distributed 126 pump sets to some farmers as relief materials and efforts are being made to give more pump sets for irrigation, the minister said. <laughs> In Nagaland, the district administration MON and the Department of Health and Family Welfare organized a one-day free enrollment drive for the beneficiaries of Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri, Jan Arugga Yojna at MON today. Deputy Commissioner Thavasilan K stated that the scheme aims to provide coverage of 5 lakh rupees per family annually benefiting poor families for secondary and tertiary care hospitalization through a network of empaneled health care provider. After the formal program, free enrollment drive was held for the beneficiaries of Ayushman Bharat. Pradhan Mantri Janarugya Yojna. 
In ICC Cricket World Cup, England stormed into the final after beating defending champions Australia by eight wickets in the second semi-final at Birmingham last night. England chased down the victory target of 224 runs in 32.1 overs. Earlier electing to bat first, five-time world champions Australia were bowled out for 223 in 49 overs. Chris Walks and Adil Rashid took three wickets each for the host. England will now face New Zealand in the final at Lords on Sunday. A total number of 2,437 sporting talents have been identified for support under the Kelo India scheme. Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju informed this in a written reply in the Lok Sabha. Under the scheme, the government provides a financial assistance of about 5 lakh rupees per annum for a period of 8 years, the minister informed. The nine-day Sri Sri Jagannatha Rath Yatra came to an end today in Guwahati. The concluding Rath Yatra, organized by ISKCON, started from Cotton University and ended at ASTC Boston at Ulubari. Several dignitaries, including Vice Chancellor of Cotton University, Dr. Bhavesh Chandra Goswami, Guwahati ISKCON President Sri Jiva Das Prabhu, actor Nusita Goswami, were present on the occasion. Devotees from other parts of the state also took part in the Yatra. During the festival, Bhagavad Path was also organized. In Manipur, the eight-day Rath Yatra Kang festival, a traditional religious celebration, concluded on Thursday. The main events of the festival were pulling of Kang, a traditional chariot and offering of flowers and fruits to Sri Sri Jagannath, Balabhadra and Subhadra. Despite seasonal drizzling, a large number of devotees turned up with traditional festive attires at the palace gate and at Sri Govindaji temple complex. The pulling of Kang was accompanied by a band party. The Iskon Temple Authority also celebrated the festival by pulling Mini Kang along the airport road. In Meghalaya, the annual Baden Kram festival kicked off yesterday to the tune of drums and flute where the young and old took part in dancing and celebration. The believers of Niamtri and the Rai Jawai have started preparing for the Baden Kram festival which is also known as Si Ki Su the preparation for this festival began from the month of March with ritual called Ka Kabai Muknur Nyakhang Nyapithad Ka Siang Kafa towards its culmination days. The festival began on Thursday with traditional offering of food to the ancestors and the departed soul from the family called Ka Siang Kafa, which was performed by every clan. And before we wind up the bulletin, a recap of the headlines. Government's target to make India a $5 trillion economy by 2025 is based on proper plans, says Union Finance Minister. Lok Sabha passes demands for grants for railways. Railways will not be privatized, assures Pius Goel. Flood situation of northeast remains grim as vast areas of Assam, Meghalaya and Onachal reeling under flood water. Army and DRF deployed for rescue work. Today, Northeast Disability Summit begins in Guwahati. Union Secretary Gamlin says the youngest deserves equal opportunities. And in ICC World Cup, England to take on New Zealand in the final at Lords on Sunday. And that brings us to the end of this evening's bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Namaskar.